Ugh. Hello everybody, welcome to another unboxing here at Visa War. Uh, before we get stuck into the main event, let me just introduce my, my two wingmen for the evening. We have Kev here, Kev, Kevin Bryant Hello. from uh, Privateer Press, he's Press Gangers. Hello there. And I have my man Justin here from <laughs> Beast of War. Finally, someone who doesn't take the piss whenever we start a video. And nah, I'm getting, no need being to do that. Just like Warren. All right, anyway, well, we're here for an unboxing. So, what have we all got today? Me, I'm starting out with the worst beer chieftain for the Legion of Everblight. Very good. What have you got? I've got my new favourite, um, the Galleon. Oh, somebody's brought out a big toy again. Oh, got to. I feel slightly inconsequential in comparison to the Galleon. Uh, I have Rask, the Bogtrog Warlock. But having said that, it is a Warlock, and they are, they are definitely a focal point of any army. I don't know, a good unit attachment can bring up any unit to be in something special. Uh, it's nice just to have something big to play with all the real factions, so I'm happy with this as well. Would you yeah. want to get us started then and show us what, what's in the box for the Galleon? Okay then, right. So we'll just open up the, uh, the big shell and then we'll uh, put it somewhere where we can see it. So yep. there's, the, there's the box, all pretty, yep. with lots of uh, pirates underneath uh, leading the charge. Yep. All good. Right, so in we go. We've got two um, two containers with lots of uh, metal bits. Just put, uh, we'll try and get those somewhere where you can see them, and then some very very big bits of resin, plus the obligatory two two cards for a galleon. Its base. Its wreck marker should it ever be destroyed, which is never, and the instructions. Wow, that looks a little complicated on the instructions, man. Uh, yes, I mean, compared to some of them, it is, a, um, I actually counted when I made mine, it's over 40 pieces. It's quite intensive, but the pictures do make sense when you go through them. Mm. Um, the, galley, uh, the cards themselves, a nice amount of hit points there. Um, it's got lo lots of guns. It's got 2D3 um, guns on, on its uh, pulls, plus it's got its harpoon that it can shoot and then drag stuff to it to hit it. Yeah, well, that's, that's the one thing I've been waiting to find out. Does that harpoon drag a colossal? It doesn't drag a colossal because colossals can't be moved by there, but mm. I have before um, shot old Rowdy, dragged it into melee and then beaten it to a wreck in one turn, which <laughs> was very satisfying. Uh, so honey, you've just done the old uh, the old scorpion. Get over here! It really is. I mean, if you could paint it black and uh, black and yellow, it'd be uh, quids in. Uh, so. Right. Anyone, if you have a picture of this thing, paint it up in the, that color scheme. Send it in because I want to see that. Just just to uh, show you, to got an idea. This is the main body of it. Mm -hmm. um, I found only a few little um, injection points over the whole model, so it's not too bad. But that is as big as my fist. Uh, the, the the body section. It is mm -hmm. massive. Um, and it's, the bit I like is the little portholes at the back, so you could, um, if you're a really good painter, you could draw, say, the four Beatles right back there on the <laughs> yellow submarine. <laughs> Roman, you have a challenge. Uh, if only I was that good. Um, then we've got one section of the crane arm with the, with the girders and the counterweight, which is quite cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the... Oh, look at the size of those shoulders. Yeah, the two shoulders. They are different, and it's worth uh, making sure you get the correct one. This one with the little tower is for the, for the crane. Mm -hmm. And this one here with the little insert is for the uh, shield, uh, which we're showing in a second. Yeah. And then finally, we've got the boiler. Excellent. And just the size of that boiler is as big as some light jack. So mm. you've got an idea of how big that bad boy can be. Fantastic. So <sighs> moving on to all our Lovely, yeah. lovely resin bits. Um, yeah. More metal on that? More metal, more resin. Yeah. Very quickly, we got the two legs plus the feet. So they all, they, it all goes together very easily. Um, the legs have got pins on the hips, so it's, uh, there's only one way you can put them. So it's all nice and simple to make sure you get that right because yeah. Without a steady hit there, the model is going to be very wobbly. Yeah, on a big model like this, you're not really going to go for a gigantic dynamic pose. No. You know, you want it to be big and solid. Then we've got, uh, so there's, there's the hip itself. 
So uh, that's, yeah, sort of, there's the, I'll just try and show clearly without my hands in the way. There's the points for the, for the legs to go in to make sure you yep. get it correct. Uh, then we've got, there's, there's the shield piece I was saying for the mm -hmm. shoulder. That, that, it, that looks like it's been stolen off a Menoth. It does look like the Menoth. Uh, it, it, it looks like it's been it's a, a Menoth stolen. butt flap. Yeah, it looks a little bit that, like the butt flap. Could make quite a good shield for um, for a, a jack of some sort, actually. Yeah, yeah. if you want a, a big meaty shoulder plate on one mm. of your heavies, if you're wanting to convert it into it, yeah. Yeah. Um, then we've got the waist section with all the pipes that join the hips to the mm -hmm. to the main body section, mm. which Lovely. goes quite nicely. And then we get to the the weapons. First off. Here's the harpoon. Good lord. Look that's, at the size of that. Yeah. That's big and meaty. I mean, the, the harpoon itself, I've had it against infantry models, and it, on its own, it's taller than most infantry, easily. Uh, it's bigger than any of my Man of Wars. Then combine that with the other, rest of the arm, and it is that huge. Is fantastic. Yeah. It is massive, and it will scare the bejesus out of most people. Then we've got the other section. Yep. Um, we've got the rest of the, the crane arm. There's a few little bits of flak there. Um, you've got the two sections which make the claw. I'm trying to do this quickly, so. Oh, I see. Like yep. a so that and that. Power lifter kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's, yeah it's, it's, like it's the old crane. sort of aliens design. Yeah, yeah crane claw, so. Yeah. Um, so that goes like that. Yep. Um, then you've got the winch. Uh, sorry, that, sorry, this winch section, I apologise, uh, that is for the rest of the harpoon to draw it back in once it's mm -hmm. fired. You've got this win winch section, which fits on top, I'm just trying to make sure, lovely. Um, to, to again, rep to show when the claws open and close, like mm -hmm. a, a crane. Um, then we've got, here's the head itself, I mean... <laughs> Again, uh, can we say Donald Duck without Privateer wanting to kill me? Without me trying to kill you, um, it's still got that uh, nautical theme. If you yep. look at the yeah, pirate yeah. jacks with the um, the old mariner visors and yeah, everything. yeah, with the the old bubble helmet that yeah. you used to see worn. Yeah, uh, where you know where it, they've tried to make it look mercenary but keep the mm -hmm. um, keep the theme of of the men off. Uh, men off the Merc, sorry, and the, the Pirates. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, we are waiting for the Relic uh, Colossal to come out. Yes, though, admittedly, word has been released that they are in works on that uh, just the other week at TempleCon, so we can only hope. Yep. And then we've got all various metal pieces which connect the body to the to the arms. Uh, it's a load of stuff yeah, in there. Some, um, various uh, it's, it's what I like about these colossals, you have so many bits yeah. to work on. Due to, due to the pipe work being on the outside along here, mm -hmm. they've got some additional pipe work which you mount on top. To ah, so gotcha. it continues on up over and around? Oh, yeah, all, all over. Yeah. Um, and then so that, that goes underneath the head to sort of guard the pipes from mm -hmm. the front. Mm -hmm. And that's part one of the many parts that forms the crane arm. Yeah, how many parts are in that crane arm? Uh, 13 on the crane arm and 8 on the harpoon arm. Good grief. I, I've built heavy <laughs> jacks with less parts than that. Yeah. Um, but still, it's a lovely, lovely it model. It is. And then finally... All the little tiny bits? All the little tiny bits. Well, you say tiny. We'll start with that. That's quite a hefty chain, yeah. That's a hefty... That goes between the uh, hoist and the harpoon. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's this chain. Yep. which goes between the crane hook and the other hoist. Mm -hmm. And that's the other part of the anchor, God. these two bits for the harpoon. Right. Loads of stuff. And then we have all the other little miscellaneous bits and pieces. Ver yeah. ver uh, the side guns, various... Um, Is that a crown in there I can see? No, I'll explain those in a second. Well, we'll do that one. That's not a crown. That goes on top of the primary chimney, just uh, for of decoration. Course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, you've got the various secondary guns. Well, they call them secondary, but... Yeah, they're, I think they are. They, they're still pretty meaty. They're very meaty. That's where the galleon gets its name from, with all the cannons. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's like a walking yeah. land ship. And you've got these, which are the jaws of the of the crane, uh, yeah. with with the little jaws. Mm -hmm. um, and again, various pipes and also luggage, which goes and crates, which go around the galleon because mercs use their jacks to transport. Yeah, all their gear. All their gear between fights as well. Brilliant, mm -hmm. absolutely. Brilliant. Um, as you can see, there's still several bits in there, but they're. Re uh, repeats of these, just various guards and, yep. and guns. All in all, very, very happy. Very, it, very cool kit. It takes takes a couple of hours, but just take your time, work on each section, like the arms, 
-hmm. and the body separate, and then join them at the end. It yeah. also helps for painting if they're in separate. Yeah. And well, I mean, look, I saw you have one yourself yeah. already, but you've pinned it. Would you say that's the way to go with something this big? I would say, well, most of it doesn't need to be pinned, but the uh, the arms definitely do, mm -hmm. just because there's a, especially the length of them, there's a lot of weight at the end, so mm -hmm. just to give it that extra strength. Yeah. Um, but the main body is fine, the pipe work is fine, but I've, I've kept the arms separate until I finish painting it, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, I've double pinned them so there's, the, the arms can't rotate. Yeah. Uh, to give it a bit more strength, but once I've finished, they'll be uh, glued in and it'll be ready to roll. How long has nice. it taken to build it so far? It it took me one evening to. Okay. Admittedly, it was about two movies worth because I, I normally have a movie on in the background when I'm, I'm mm, doing stuff like that. Same as myself. Um, what was your out of interest? What was your movie of choice for uh, the Galleon? My movie of choice. I was what I watched Lockstock, and I think it was Flash Gordon. Excellent, excellent, excellent <laughs> choice. There's the gag. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But uh, all in all, very happy, and it's been very potent on the battlefield so far, and brought Mercs to play on an even on an even take nice. out. Nice. Well, oh. stay uh, stay tuned, guys, because um, we may have a, 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 some details on a little competition at the end of this video for those. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Stu, I'm going to stop you right there. If they've seen my full page spread, they know what they're winning. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just in case. Some of you have got selective vision, uh, you know, maybe a patch on the one eye, and you looked away and you clicked the video. <laughs> yeah. However, it worked. Maybe somebody set the video up for you to watch. Uh, but whichever way, uh, comment on our Beast of War channel um, on the Beast of War website. Yep. Pop what you uh, pop one of your comments down below. What you think of the galleon? What you think of the comments that we've made during the video today? More me, less one p. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, based on that, one of them will be randomly selected, and you will win yourself the very galleon that Kev here was unboxing. Yep, and don't forget, guys, the accounts are free to create. You're not having to pay a penny to get in on this competition. It's just five minutes of your time to sign up. And you never know. Um, we've given away quite a few colossals on Gargantuans uh, and things we, recently. We've got two. This is number three that we're yeah. giving away. So uh, yeah, it's well worth doing because you do it once, and you never know more of these. I couldn't possibly comment that I might have a few more big box well, things in my uh, in my well, office I, to give away. I, so. Your office is a, a mysterious <laughs> place of wonderment. In ivory tower, to be fair. <laughs> anyway, moving on. What have uh, you got for us, Justin? All right, well, as I said before, I've got the War Spear Chieftain. Now, he's a, a unit attachment for the Blight at War Spears for uh, Legion of Everblight. So, quickly show you his card on the camera. Ooh, purple. Now, if you quickly look at his stats, he's not overly impressive in his stats. It's his abilities that are doing it yeah. for you. So we'll quickly get out his bits. He comes in less bits than a Colossal, thankfully. Uh, so here we have main legs, nice dynamic pose. Yeah. You've got all this wonderful chain mail to work with. So Very all nice. you painters out there are really gonna like it. Uh, we have obviously his war spears in their uh, satchel on his back or do quiver. Come, do they come straight or is it just the... Ah, uh, dude. <laughs> no, 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 look, it's metal. Sometimes they will take a little weight and transport. There you go, look at that, metal. look at that. Two seconds work. Okay, Magic. fair enough. Right, then we have his main body. Big, buff, beefy, horns on the head. Very, very nice sculpt from Privateer as always. And just so you're not completely <laughs> happy. All right, give me a second, guys. Here give me go. a second. Give Amuse a yourselves second. for a second as Justin straightens his pole. Ah! I'm was, sorry, but that was bad. I was trying to avoid I'm, that. I'm sitting next to you and I'm, as you're doing it, you're smiling. You're making eye contact with me as you're doing it. It's, it's oh, I hate you people. I absolutely hate you people. Right. Anyway, we have his other arm with the big segmented uh, armor plates, horns and stuff coming That's off them. as well. And a straight pole, or almost straight. Ish. And we have the base. Right, so we'll quickly run through his stat card. So pop that closed, get it out of the way. So first thing he has... Attachment, Blighted Ogre and War Spear unit. So basically, is a UA for them. He has Huntsman. Now this is the good one. Yes. Because uh, after deployment, but before either player has moved, he picks a target model, or hang on, just double check, enemy model or unit. So he can target a Warjack if he likes, and he'll gain plus two movement, plus two attack and damage rolls. Not bad. Whoop. And I've dropped the card. Sorry, guys. Oh. Professional. It's plus two movement Aye. while within 10 inches of the enemy. Yep, it's... Uh, of the prey. Yes, there you go. Uh, actually, Han, seeing as you're the one that knows all this, I'm sorry, I was at that tournament at the weekend and it was just him going, no, people are going to watch your videos and go, no. <laughs> 
Well, it was embarrassing watching you crash and burn at that tournament. I'm, I'm sorry, I come to play games to have fun. Basic, basically, you select an enemy unit solo model uh, at the start of the game, and that's that the War Spears prey. While they're within 10 inches of the prey, they get plus two speed, so you can measure that. Some models might get it, some might not. Mm -hmm. And they also get plus two to hit and plus two damage when attacking their prey. Once they've wiped that unit out, they can then select another prey. So if you're smart, okay. you can use that several t uh, times in one game, and mm -hmm. it adds an e extra level of punch. Yeah, no, Mike downstairs, he plays Legion, I've faced this once or twice, and it does hurt. Yeah. It is very, very painful. Combined with the fact that they've already got Assault, so if they if you make your prey, say, uh, a Jack or something, they, they charge in, throwing their spear, so they can do a nice bit of damage there with the additional damage because of the Huntsman. Mm -hmm. Then they're going in and they're hitting very hard. They're hitting at strength uh, 15 in melee. Uh, so plus, yeah, one it, of my kid or heavies, that's minus five. That's out, yeah, especially yeah. on a charge roll. Mm. Yeah, combined with, with, their, uh, with their 15 on their spears. Yep, and it, then he has another little special roll beneath yeah, that. Yeah, he, he's got tactics, relentless charge. So this unit gains Pathfinder when they charge as well. So if someone's trying to hide behind a wall or there's difficult ground, or there's a wood, and you're halfway through. Exactly. You can ignore that, so it really gives a lot of versatility to mm. the unit. Yeah. He's causing terror as well. He causes terror, though I can't remember if the war spear unit, because I don't play Legion, um, I can't remember if they cause terror automatically anyway. Mm. But if not, he gives it to him. If not, he just joins in shouting boo. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and if I'm right, he's also tough. He, uh, no, no, he's commander. Um, uh, that's that's it. He's not tough, okay. uh, but he does he does have set defence along with the. I know the war spears do have that anyway. Mm. So if you charge them, they go up to defence fourteen, which is it's good. It's, it's, it's good. It's not uber, but it's not it's not shabby. 14, uh, see, that's 14 what I, I can about live with. All of war machine and hordes and stuff. You're not aiming for anything that's incredibly overpowered. All you're aiming for is something that's good enough yeah. to knock on in. It's a brutal, yeah. nasty fight to the finish, four, and that's four, why I love them. Yeah, fourteen. You need. Just slightly above the curve, um, exactly. so it, it's not taking it into ridiculous levels, but it, it's, mm -hmm. it's giving them that edge. Exactly. So, well, that's the War Spear Chieftain. You can see him under close camera. Stu, you've lovelily laid him out here. Shall yep. I do a little QVC Well, hand? no, I'm just going to move him actually so he's in camera shot. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, now, I'll try and get a nice painted picture of him from the privateer site and bring it up on screen for everybody. Yeah, he's he's a, he's lovely though, and I tell you what, the uh, what I'm loving about them is even mm. though the because the warp is a plastic, but even um, the detail work, all the he's effectively he's very much tied into the unit as you'd expect mm. a member of the unit to be. But there's just there's lots of lovely little extra details on there. He's a he's a lovely bit. Of, oh, lovely I've, bit of work. I've only just noticed love. the cost. Yeah. Only only two points. That is yeah. that is cheap. Cheap as chips. For for eight wounds and what he gives, that is dirt cheap. I'm excited yeah. by the fact that I can have two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> FA two. Yeah, which is quite unusual for a unit attachment. They're usually limited to one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so all in all, he is he really steps yeah. up for for Fantastic. the uh, for the Ogrim. Yep. So we'll clear him away quickly, and Stu, you'll get to show us what you the brought. The main the main man. Um, right. I have, and I'll uh, I'll show him to here. Mm -hmm. I have, now sweeping me under here, Rask, or Rask, depending on how you want to pronounce him, our Bogtrog Warlock. Uh, this is for the minions, for hordes. Now, he's unusual in a couple of respects, primarily um, because he's, he's a Bogtrog Warlock, and this will be the very, very first one. We haven't actually had a, a Warlock for the Bogtrog specifically before. Um, the Gator Men have had a few but the, uh, the bog trogs not so much. The other thing that's interesting and quite exciting about him is, currently there is no book for him. He's brand spanking new. He's going to be in the new Gargantuan's book, which is coming out uh, in, the next, uh, yeah, in the next few, uh, few months, in fact, less than a few months' time. So he's, he's very exciting. I'm going to cover all the, uh, cover all the relevant bits um, shortly, but I'll just go through each piece now. First of all, we'll talk about the cards. I'll go through the abilities in a moment. But first of all, there's his main profile card. I'll just bring that up nice and tight for people there. Right. So he's quite nice. He's got his war beast allocation is six. So he, yeah, he's got six bonus points there for his war beasts. He's got six fo uh, sorry six fury. Uh, he's also coming in. He's got a trident cannon. So a nice bit of range there. Which is a nice power twelve cannon. Yeah, you, know, you can never be too sniffy about a power twelve shot, especially with what it can do. This is it. Uh, we'll cover that in a sec. He's got the uh, sacral blade. Um, 
And again, that's a magic magic weapon, and that's uh, power four, so it's giving him a PNS of 11, so that's not too sad. In total, in terms of his abilities, he's got a mat of six, a rat of seven, so he's pretty impressive there. A defense of 15, which is nothing to be sniffed at. Armor of 15, which isn't too bad. His command is poor, though. He has a command of five, which, but bearing in mind, he is a bog trog. We're not expecting him to be uh, marshalling uh, the forces of Signar or anything like that. He's... Uh, he, He's relatively minor in the in the uh, in in the grand scheme of things. Looking on the back though, this is where this is where it gets very interesting for him. So obviously he's a minion. He's going to work with Circle, Legion, Scorn, and Trollbloods, which is quite cool. Obviously he's a bog trog, so he's going to be amphibious. Okay, so he can, as you would imagine, he can move through water and other effects. Um, he's got some really really cool uh, abilities. So he's got Call to Sacrifice. Bog trog. So basically, if he gets disabled by an enemy attack, he can pass on the the the, the disability to another to another model, uh, another model of the bog trog type near him. Okay, that model is effectively destroyed, and if another model is destroyed as a result of call to sacrifice, Rask heals back a point of damage. So that's quite handy. Um, so as, does this mean instead of just transferring damage to his war beast, he can do it to bug drug minions? Absolutely, he's got, he's got yeah. both. That is one reason why his command is so low because yep. it's in range of the command. That's mm. it. So he, he can actually be palming off um, palming off wounds onto bog trogs, and mm -hmm. you can have a lot of bog trogs because they're relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. He's a gator man warlock, so he can only have um, minion gator men war beasts in his battle group. Okay, so again, that's a it's not really a limit to be fair. It's um, yeah, I mean. He, he would look very strange, I think. Again, I like the background. He'd look very strange with a load of uh, Pharaoh guys running around. Yeah, uh, a load of the, <laughs> yeah. the stitched up pigmen. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter how much water effect you put on the bases, they're still going to look a little bit out of place. <laughs> uh, the Trident Cannon is, is where it gets very, very cool. So, again, I'll just hold that up there. You should hopefully be able to see some of the ammo types and things on there. Yeah. So, he's got, each time the weapon is used to make an attack, you choose one of the following abilities. So... In some ways, just looking at this, he's reminding me of um, Eris from the Retribution. So you've got uh, arcane interference. So he can um, he can hit another uh, if he hits a model that's got upkeep spells, enemy, and things like that. It causes them to expire, and focus are uh, lost on it as well. So that, that's quite good. Almost like a uh, this, well, it's effectively disruption on warjacks. Uh, he can energy siphon. So he can hit an enemy model with one or more Focus or Fury. The model use, loses the Focus or Fury one point, and it is transferred to Rask. That's really handy. And then finally, the other attack you can do is Paralysis, which I think is one of the best ones, which is living model hit by the weapon as its base defense reduced to seven, and it cannot run or charge. Paralysis lasts for one round. Now, I'm sure we can all think of some quite nasty uh, light war beasts and some of the other bits and pieces in the game. Warcasters, things yeah, like I, that. I'm sorry, I think the attack before, I think, is the one that's going to be well, nasty. E energy siphon. Yeah, because if he charges a caster or a warlock with a full stack and just starts siphoning well, it off... It's more the first one, because if he hits uh, with the arcane interference, yep. it's very much like uh, the uh, Eris 2, or Epic Eris, the mm. uh, Angel of Retribution. Okay. Yep. When, uh, if you attack a, a warcaster that's uh, uh, camping a load of focus mm -hmm. to up their armour... Yep. You shoot it with that, it loses all of that camp focus. So you suddenly have Nemo going, I've got six focus, I'm armour nearly 20. You yep. shoot it and it goes down to 14, Ow. ready for your assassination. Or I've got um, um, Iron Flesh protecting me. Boom, no, you haven't. You can t That arcane interference mm. can do so much. Yes. But as you said, that paralysis may be on a... Um, on a warlock to make sure your beast then hits it more often. So yep. even with the transfers, yeah, it you can't can burn keep dodging. through the fury that he has there's, stacked on. There's, there's, he gives a lot of tactical option, and with a rat of seven, mm -hmm. and he can boost a hit. That's yeah. what he's, that is, he is really yeah. nice. In terms of spells and feats, which is as we know is where the uh, warlocks uh, come out, you have um, four spells, um, various types. You've got the, the usual th things that you'd expect. So you can make the ground, um, you can make open terrain, rough terrain with some of them. You can um, you can target friendly models and gain plus three melee damage, but you suffer minus one defense because basically you become fury, you get fury. There's all sorts of ones. You've got a boundless charge in there, and you've also got our old favorite admonition, um, which has cropped up on a few other models it's in the past. It's a great selection of spells. Yeah. All of those have got use. None of them are filler. Uh, mm. They give uh, Gatormen posse 
real punch. You can, um, if your opponent hasn't got Pathfinder, they can control the battlefield a little mm -hmm. bit. You've got options after options after yep. options with them. He is fantastic. But, well, last thing, his feet. Well, I, I was going to cover his feet in just a second. Um, I just quickly um, just going to move move these pieces out of the way because the feet, dark waters. Okay, now. I think the feet is possibly one of the most exciting things for, you get, feats tend to boil down to a couple of things. They either set you up for a really good turn or you execute it um, to minimize your opponent using their feet mm -hmm. or, or your opponent having a good round. And I think Dark Waters falls into the, uh, into the latter category. So Dark Waters, while in Rask's control area, friendly faction models cannot be targeted by mm. attacks or charges made by models more than five inches away from them. Dark Waters lasts a round. So in effect, what you're doing is, it's when you're you're not quite at point blank range, when you're in, um, you probably, both sides will need to get a charge, a full charge in to actually close, to close the distance to get into the enemy, a charge action. You, um, the, as the bog trogs, you pop your feet, you do Dark Waters, and you are ensuring that as long as you've got that five inch gap, yeah, minimum, so six inches, five and a half, six inches gap, your opponent is in serious trouble because they're not going to be... I'm just thinking back to as men off if I was Krios or something like that and I've popped my feet so I'm going to be getting all those attacks in combat. I'm not going to be able to charge you. I could walk into you, mm. but I can't, I can't, uh, I can't charge you. Um, and that's, uh, as that's you said, stunning. It helps you set up because you can move up the table yep. the turn before you're going to charge. So you go, are they going to shoot half my, my models out off before I get there? You can mm -hmm. pop that and you know that 80, 90... Even 100% of your army mm -hmm. is going to be still be around the next turn to do what you wanted to do. So you can set up for the scenarios, for the uh, alpha strike, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. It it really does save uh, your gators big style going mm -hmm. in. I'm, I'm I'm very excited about Rask, and look, particularly on his artwork um, that we've seen the promotional artwork mm -hmm. and things. There's lots of little undead bog trogs around yeah. him, and mm -hmm. so and we know that they're a unit coming out in the gargantuan book. So I think. I actually think it makes Bog Trogs quite an interesting idea for uh, for, for a theme list all in their self. Be interested to see what his faction uh, his faction theme list looks like. Yeah, I, I've, I think I saw it a while back, but I can't remember the details. But I, I know a few people that play lizard men and and lizard men, sorry, gators. Sorry, wrong system. <laughs> wrong system. Uh, uh, they're all they're all green and scaly. Um, that have now put uh, Rask as their second cast, uh, second warlock when they uh, working out their lists. He yeah. really stepped up and uh, given them extra options. Um, so very, very briefly, uh, lovely. He's kind of hunched over. He's got that big crest on the back. Reminds me a little bit of um, the um, the guys out of uh, the Naga from Warcraft. He's got that lovely that lovely crest there. There's his trident, um, his trident cannon. And again, so that's going to go in on this side here. So that's going to look quite cool. On the other side, so you've got your you've got your little backpack of tridents or backpack of different ammunition types that you can put in there. And then he's got a nice arm here. Again, he's in that lovely pose where they're where they're casting, where they're doing their uh, their various incantations and things. If you were skilled with your little transparent and you wanted to do like your little casting um, casting animation and things like that that hand is set up just to receive something, a little conversion like that. Other than that, you've got um, various other claws and other bits and bits and pieces, some doubly bits to go on his, um, uh, to go on the model here. Uh, he's a lovely, lovely bit of kit. And finally, most important thing for a bog trog, his tail. He has a separate tail, which just sockets in on the back there. And it's, again, when mounted on the base, that's not gonna get in the way. That's not gonna break off in your figure case. That's just gonna tuck in quite nicely. Yeah, again, guys, I'll try and find the nice yeah. painted images from the privateer site to give everyone a, a quick look at them. Uh, most of the time they do a nice 3D thing, so I'll see if I can do a little uh, slider coming across the screen, just showing them off right now. Yep, so there you go. So Rask, nice bit of kit. Not too many pieces, but you know, at the end of the day, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna be expecting that. He's just a small figure. But in terms of what he's gonna do for you on the table, Really, really worth having yeah. a look. Really, really interesting. But there we go. So those are the three we had today. Um, as awesome as I think Rask is, and as useful for Everblight players as I think the War, uh, the War Spear <coughs> Chieftain is, yep. is there any earthly reason why the Galleon wouldn't win this today? Uh, Gav is going to hate us for this, because last time he brought in his Colossal, but I think the Galleon wins it this time just on sheer, sheer impressiveness. Took Many months waiting, and it's definitely been worth it when it finally came mm. out. Very happy. Yep. So, 
as always, we have our little wild card. So you've won. What have you picked out to show us just as that little extra something, the icing on the cake? As a little something extra, um, I've decided to bring one of my personal banes when I face them, the, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the Swamp Troll. So I'll just show you okay. there, uh, and yep. there it is. So uh, it's coming out so, now in... Yeah, this is one of the plastic resin kits. Yes, it's the new the new resin kit. Yeah, I uh, think the, the shift to plastic resin has been great for Privateer Press. Yeah, that looks great. I yeah. mean, you've got the big... Oh, he's got the... the face, yeah. look at that character. Yeah, you, oh, you've man. got that good frog song kind of uh, thing going yeah, on with the, 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 the bullfrog the, the bullfrog bit going on. It's all nice and easy. You've got uh, his two fists, which uh, so plug and socket into the shoulders very, mm -hmm. very easily. Um, and the two feet likewise do the same. Uh, so it, um, he will just assemble really, really easily. So that will go there, that will go there. Whoops, let's move this up a little bit so people can see. And then the two feet go there and there. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's the base. And then finally, excellent. Look yeah, at that tongue. The tongue. Yeah, you're, you don't want to get a French kiss off that. Well, there's that one time. Yeah, it, uh, it might rip your stomach out. So I'll put that up there. Um, he he's just really useful. Um, he's uh, as a light beast. He's got f uh, three fury. So shoot, there's the card. It looks very yep. pretty. Threshold of nine. Threshold of nine. So you can you can run him quite nicely with it. Um, death of twelve doesn't sound good. But he's got a um, he's got camouflage. So he gets plus two defense when he's in mm -hmm. cover, and his animus. Uh, basically, you put concealment round the model, and they suffer minus, so enemies suffer minus two. So he he can give himself his own cover or yeah. a warcaster. Yeah. So is that supposed to be flies or something around mm -hmm. him? Or? Yeah, a swarm of bugs and and all That's sorts. Right. Of so this is him bringing a packed lunch. Yeah, but also he's got um, with his his tongue. His tongue is his, his range weapon, mm. which okay. with the uh, impaler you can make it go up to range twelve because it's got and it's got a critical consume. Okay. Mm. So on a critical hit, the attack mod uh, if it, the attack hits a small based non warlock warcaster model, they're removed from play. I know of a friend of mine who managed to crit consume the uh, the book of men off. Because it counts as a warrior model. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, this thing rocks up the field, fires its tongue, and just goes on num 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 num. Yeah, rather than the book going, oh, you've got to woo me one point at a time, he just went, come here, from, and it's, it's a lovely look. <laughs> uh, that sculpt yeah. is lovely. Yeah, no, That's no, Privateer really are lovely. always doing better and better sculpts. They are, they are getting them. much better, and it's all it's all moving the right way. It's almost like a yeah. fishing net kind of thing, the uh, the clothing on him. Yeah, the actual little oh, bit of lovely. a cape on his back yeah, there. That's yeah. lovely. Uh, yeah, again, guys, I'll see if I can get a 360 up for this, because it is just so pretty. You're going to want to see this thing paint it. My only concern about the kit, if I'm brutally honest, as awesome as it is, is that it's brittle. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The plastic resin has a bit of flex to it. It's nothing but too severe. But my concern severe. is, in your figure case, mm. so I just build it like that. So that's going to stick in like that. Mm. So how is that? So he's going to be built like that in your case, but that you've got just a very thin piece sticking up at an angle There's to the model. There's a very, very simple answer to that. One mil magnets. What, you're just going to remove his tongue each time? Yeah. Or, mm. as, no, no, no. One mil magnet onto mm. that, pull straight out. Or the fact that when this model is very unique compared to all the other trolls, mm. so even without the tongue, he, the pose and the uh, yeah, coloration is very... If you really want it to, you can yeah, tell them that's what, that's that's so what I'm wondering. Because his mouth, you know, if you could put him in your case uh, base down like that, mm -hmm. the cutout you would have in your case, for like, if you have a, like a cavalry slot, the yep. tongue can be sitting there. True. And it probably True. wouldn't get damaged anyway. Yeah. There are means means and ways. Yeah. Yeah. Or That's, it's the same with every miniature. There are ways and means. There is no impossibility or with miniatures. Cut the tongue yeah, down a say, little bit. You, you can yeah. almost cut it there at the bend. Mm. It, yeah, cut it there at that bend. So actually then you're mounting it and you've just got that amount coming out. And I just think I think that still looks really good. Yeah, well, I mean look, it's all personal preference. Yeah. If, if you want to magnetize it, convert it, or actually just get something custom made for your case to keep them safe. But yeah. he's, it's all up he, to you. He can just Pick off those solos. Give mm. give plus two defense to your to the yeah, troll warlocks. Yeah, my, my manhunter would he, like to see one of these running up. He, the he's been a pain when when I faced him, and mm. it hurts. He is good, and Phil, you you can keep that quote. All right. <laughs> okay, so you just had to get the little shout out. Anyway, that's everything we've had to show you. Yeah. Let's, uh, don't let's forget the remind uh, everybody yeah, yeah, once absolutely. again. We have the uh, the colossal up for grabs this time. The uh, the galleon. So, if you're on Beast of War watching this, comment below. If you're on YouTube, 
for on a crossover. Uh, I'll try and put a link into the com into the post comment below, so you can just link straight through in case you can't find us. Create your free account, drop your comment below, and you could win one of these. So, guys, I think we'll pass it out to you now. What do you think of what we've brought in today? Is the galleon the best, <laughs> or do you like the others a little more? Drop us a comment below, and we'll chat to you in the next one.